We all love to travel, and those of us who are especially enthusiastic love to travel by plane, of course near the window, from where there is a magnificent view of the earth, sky, clouds, and a wing that at times behaves unusually, constantly playing with some mechanisms like a pianist with his fingers. Hello aviators, Sky here, and today we are looking at a detail without which the plane is just a carriage with jet engines. Welcome to the wing. First, a general view. The wing is a large and relatively horizontal surface, the specific shape of which, due to its passage through the air, creates lift that keeps us above the clouds. The wings can have many shapes, sizes, different thickness and sweep. Sometimes there are several of them, on biplanes there are two. Most of the modern commercial aircraft have a low sweep wing, mounted on the bottom of the fuselage, like the one we have here. At first glance, the wing is a monolithic structure, but if you look closely, you can see many parts that occasionally move. Let's try to figure out what all this is, why it is there, and how it works. We are still on the ground. The airliner slowly moves along the airfield, the flight attendants check the readiness of the cabin, and the pilot greets the passengers. Outside, metamorphoses begin. Large surfaces start moving out from the back and front of the wing. I present to you the flaps and slats. Modern civil airliners operate at a fairly wide range of heights and speeds, from 0 meters at the airport at sea level to 10-11 kilometers above the clouds, and from 0 knots at the apron to above 450-500 knots in flight. A serious spread in the flight parameters leads to the same spread in the requirements for the aircraft, and first of all for the wing. So what do we do? We can't rebuild the structure several times during the flight. Or can we? During the takeoff phase, as well as during the landing phase, the wing must create maximum lift at low speeds. Yes, for an airliner, being able to fly slowly is just as important as being able to fly fast. The lower the minimum flight speed, the easier it will be to take off and land, the shorter the runway will be needed, and there will be less loads. You can of course make a high-speed monster, but who's gonna need it if it's suitable for two airports per continent? It's easier, after all, to change the wing. It is changed by several mechanisms, the largest and most important of which are the flaps. Flaps are surfaces located on the trailing edge of the wing. When retracted, they are folded and pressed against the wing, so it looks like a solid structure. At low speeds, for example on takeoff, when additional lift is required from the wing, the flaps are extended. This is very noticeable on the outside. Large panels seem to hang down from the trailing edge. This makes the wing much larger in area and also changes its aerodynamic capabilities, creating lift. There are many types of these mechanisms. On small aircraft it can be just a little flap or a small, deflectable part of the trailing edge of the wing. The flaps of large aircraft can be huge complex structures, consisting of several retractable surfaces at once. When examining the flaps in their work, we immediately notice another detail, more precisely details. What are these pylons hanging from below? The fact is that the flaps do not just hang from the rear of the wing, they hold it and lift the plane, being subjected to serious loads, so they need to be held by pretty powerful hydraulic drives, something similar to complex door hinges. But these drives cannot be left naked, so they are hidden under fairings, the aforementioned pylons. It helps the aerodynamics and it looks great. Now let's change seats and look at the front of the wing. On the leading edge you can see another mechanism, the slat. In appearance it is quite simple, a strip that moves slightly forward. What for? To provide lift on the wing, it is necessary that the air flows around it evenly without disturbing the flow, like a calm river flowing through a valley. But the plane maneuvers, raising and lowering the nose. The valley tilts and the river turns into a waterfall. This waterfall being a turbulent flow is more chaotic and can deprive the wing of its lift. So that this would not happen and the plane could maneuver without the threat of a stall, slats were invented. When necessary, they move forward and slightly downward, and the wing tilted upward gets a leading edge that looks forward. The air flowing around the slats stabilizes the flow and prevents the formation of turbulence. The valley is inclined, but the river continues to flow calmly. 
Flats of course are not a universal remedy, but they expand the range of maneuvers and pilots can fly safely, without fear that their plane will suddenly start going down. There are a lot of such mechanisms. On simpler planes, it can be just protrusions attached to the wing. On larger planes, however, there are more complex options, all for preserving the performance. Sometimes the slats are not installed at all. They are in any case mechanisms that take up space in the wing, add mass and require maintenance. If the performance can be provided without them, then this is done. This solution is often found on smaller machines. And so the plane takes off, picks up speed and altitude. Soon the wing becomes able to support the aircraft without additional assistance, and all these extended surfaces create more and more drag, which begins to interfere. So we see the flaps and slats slowly returning to their places, again transforming the wing into one monolithic structure. But not all surfaces are hidden and motionless in flight. It's time to look at the wing details, without which the plane would be uncontrollable. Unlike the previous heroes, which are used only when necessary, ailerons are used constantly. Ailerons are small planes on the trailing edge of the wing, similar in principle to ship rudders. By pivoting up and down on either side of the wing, they create a force that tilts the plane to the left or right. There are similar mechanisms on the tail, on the horizontal stabilizer deflecting the aircraft up and down, as well as on the fin. Here, exactly like on a ship, left and right but in a horizontal plane. You wouldn't see them from the window, but let's keep them in mind. Ailerons, of course, also come in many options. On large aircraft, in addition to the ailerons scattered on the wing edges, there may be surfaces closer to the fuselage, the inboard ailerons. They create less force, which allows you to work more accurately, and also reduce the bending moment and load on the wing. There are other options as well, such as flapperons, whose name in general makes their purpose clear. In cruise flight they work as ailerons, but at low speeds they can deflect downward, helping the flaps. This scheme is often used in both light and military aviation, for example among fighters, for which, due to the small wingspan, the size of conventional flaps may not be enough. We continue the flight. The plane soars above the clouds, almost not maneuvering anymore. The seat belts can be unfastened and the tables can be lowered, preparing for tea, coffee or juices. The wing in the window is clean and beautiful, and its tips are raised up. Why? Here again, we will have to return to the airflow on the wing. In flight, the air under the wing is compressed, and above the wing on the contrary is density drops, which creates lift. On ordinary tips, when the wing simply cuts off, two air masses with different pressures mix, and like natural hurricanes form a vortex. Someone will say, well, cool, look how beautifully it goes through the smoke. The problem is that this vortex at a high speed turns into a tight knot that literally pulls the wing back, which, as you understand, does not help the flight. The task of the wingtips is to weaken the vortex and reduce its ability to pull the wing back. This reduces loads and resistance to flight, which means that you can reduce engine thrust, saving fuel. Just a few percent, but in the modern economy of air travel, a few percent is big money. There is a large variety of wingtips. Initially, they were just small arrows, but over time, they became more complex and elegant. The wingtips are one of the few airframe elements where you can do a little design. So the technical necessity here is sometimes mixed with the tuning hobbies of manufacturers and the debate that this is all just pure show-off and there is not as much use for them as they say. Now we go for landing and this process repeats the takeoff but in the reverse order. Now the plane has to descend and decelerate. This greatly increases the role of mechanisms, the work of which we intentionally did not notice. Spoilers and air brakes. Spoilers are the mechanisms that tell you the key events of the plot and ruin the pleasure of getting to know the story. But this is not really from aviation. In aeronautics, spoilers are aerodynamic planes located on the upper part of the wing that can be lifted, resembling horizontal doors. In this position, they break the uniform airflow over the wing, acting as lift dumpers. Losing lift, the plane begins to stall, descending without the need to lower the nose. Usually vertical acceleration appears at this point, and passengers experience the sensation of falling. 
The ability of spoilers to reduce lift of the wing is useful in flight controls as well. If they are deployed not on both sides of the wing but only on one, the plane will begin to roll in the direction where the spoilers are deployed. This way, spoilers can help the ailerons if they are suddenly not effective enough. Of course, there isn't just the lift dumping. It's not enough to drop the altitude, sometimes the speed must also be reduced. Since wheel brakes in flight are not particularly effective, air braking ability of the spoilers is used to lower the speed. In this mode, the bigger role of spoilers is not the decrease of lift by disrupting the airflow, but the resistance of this very air which slows down the aircraft. Yes, often lift dumpers and air brakes are just functions performed by the same mechanisms. In its purest form, without the lift dumper function, we are talking about an air brake. Quite often such brakes are not on the wing at all and do not affect lift, only braking on air drag. There is a great variety of such mechanisms, limited by the capabilities and imagination of creators. Sometimes even other elements of mechanization can be responsible for braking, such as the split ailerons on the B-2 bomber or the split rudder on the space shuttle. Since on modern commercial airliners the economy is a very important factor, aviators strive for minimalism without scattering a bunch of mechanisms all over the plane. So different functions have to be combined. Fortunately automation allows you to select the optimal operating modes. Sometimes to slow down, sometimes to help descent, sometimes both. This work is most clearly seen immediately after touching down, when all mechanisms are deployed to maximum, which practically cancels out the wing lift and increases drag. The plane is pressed against the runway and slows down. Of course I only told you the basics about the wing. There are many curious little things here, and each element and mechanism has nuances that affect the flight. Both engineers and pilots must take this into account, so that the plane, arranging all these dances on its wing, would not start dancing itself. Well, we have landed. At a speed of 5 knots, when the plane is moving towards the terminal, there is no more use for the aerodynamic surfaces, so they slowly disappear, leaving in front of us an equally useless on the ground, but still incredibly beautiful wing. And this concludes our today's walk on metal and composite surfaces. Like the video, subscribe to the channel and don't forget to look out the window. There's a lot of beautiful and interesting things out there. And if you want to watch the videos early, see some exclusive behind the scenes content or just support the channel, consider joining our Patreon community. Fast flights and soft landings to you.